The committee will come to order. As is traditional with uh, this committee, uh, before we start out, we will read the uh, Oversight Committee's mission statement. We exist to secure two fundamental principles. First, Americans have a right to know the money Washington takes for them is well spent. And second, Americans deserve an efficient, effective government that works for them. Our duty on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee is to uh, protect those rights. Our solemn responsibility is to hold government accountable to taxpayers because taxpayers have a right to know what they get from their government. We will work tirelessly in partnership with Citizens Watchdogs to deliver the facts to the American people and bring genuine reform to the Federal bureaucracy. This is the mission of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. I will now um, recognize myself for a short opening statement. The Office of Personnel Management, OPM, is responsible for administering the Federal Retirement Program, which provides monthly pension checks to 2.5 million retired Federal workers and their survivors. Counter to private sector practice, where software and computer systems apply complex business rules to unique data, recent annuitants continue to wait their turn in a backlog of claims before receiving their earned pensions. For individuals applying for disability retirement and survivors applying for a lump sum death benefit, the wait is particularly long. I remain puzzled why processing a Federal retirement package remains paper-based, while products such as TurboTax help millions file their tax, complicated tax returns quickly and electronically. Since 1987, the OPM has failed in its attempts to bring modern approach to how the Federal Government pays Federal workers and their pensions. In February, the OPM issued a strategic information technology plan that discusses a paperless system. But in reality, it seems that the system, if successfully uh, implemented, will maybe result in less paper, not be paperless. Um, I applaud the hard work that has been uh, put in, uh, in in the past few uh, years under your leadership, Mr. Lewinsky. Uh, however, I am troubled by the uh, the fact that this reduction uh, in cutting the backlog in half relies on hiring additional staff to operate a patchwork uh, paperwork facility with more than 80-plus legacy systems. Uh, you all got uh, $2.6 million to improve retirement system processing, but have only spent $800,000. I, I would like to believe that that is a result of uh, good conservative financial management, but uh, I am afraid that the strategic technology plan uh, is short on detail, lacks detailed information or implementation schedules that stakeholders, including the taxpayer, can use to uh, monitor uh, the progress. And I am looking forward to hearing whether the OPM uh, is ready and capable of uh, achieving uh, true reform and, uh, and getting some technology in there. I realize uh, I have said many times that the Federal Government uh, has trouble computing its way out uh, of a paper bag, but some of the systems that I have read about uh, and, and heard about in the OPM where stuff submitted electronically, printed, printed out, processed, rescanned, it, it, it really seems like there is a great opportunity for improving efficiency, getting uh, folks the money that uh, they have earned in a, in a timely fashion and uh, cutting down on the expense and time associated with processing. I will now um, recognize my ranking member, uh, Mr. Lynch, for his opening statement. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and for holding this hearing. To examine the progress made by the Office of Personnel Management in addressing the backlog and timeliness in the processing of Federal retirement claims since the last time we held a hearing on this issue back in May of 2013. Uh, these last few years have been especially hard on Federal employees who have had to endure an onslaught of attacks from some members of Congress on their pay, benefits and due process rights. So I am certainly pleased that Chairman Farenthold and I can agree that Congress and OPM must ensure that our Federal employees receive timely and accurate pension payments upon their retirement. Our Nation's dedicated public servants deserve no less, and the Chairman and I are both sensitive to the financial hardships that a backlog and long delays in claims processing may cause and have caused some Federal retirees. I want to commend OPM for successfully achieving its 2012 strategic plan goal of reducing the retirement claims backlog to a manageable level, which was earlier 60,000 uh, claims backlog in January 2012 to just 14,000 claims at the beginning of this month. 
I know the sequestration made that accomplishment harder to achieve, and uh, a large increase in retirement application resulting from the early retirement and buyout offers uh, from the Postal Service. Uh, my sister was one of those uh, retirees. She took the early out. Uh, she didn't help matters either. Uh, while I believe that OPM has made great strides in reducing its backlog, it still falls short of the goal of, to process 90 percent of our new retirement claims uh, within 60 days, having only reached 83 percent. I know that uh, progress has been made. As of, the last, as, as of last month, it, it remained at 83 percent, but we have got to work on that. And while I think that OPM's incremental approach to modernizing its retirement claims uh, makes sense, it, it appears that the agency is making much slower progress on this front as we go forward. But again, uh, the effect of the early retirement issue uh, with the Post Office, that added a, a, uh, a, a historically large amount of claims at one point, and also the effect of sequestration uh, might have exacerbated the problem beyond, uh, uh, beyond what we see here. Uh, OPM has noted that implementation of many of the IT initiatives spelled out in OPM's February Strategic Information Technology Plan are dependent upon the receipt of sufficient funding. And I would like to explore in this hearing the support that OPM would need from Congress to ensure that it can modernize its, its retirement claim systems. I believe that the long-term sustainability of OPM's progress will depend heavily upon a transition from a paper-based manual process to an electronic process. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to revisit the status of OPM's retirement claims processing, and I look forward to hearing from our panel members. Thank you. I yield back. Uh, thank you very much. Um, members will have uh, seven days to submit their opening statements and extraneous material for the record. I would now like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome our witnesses. Uh, Ken Zawadny serves as the Associate Director for Retirement Services at the U.S. Office of Personnel Management. Welcome, sir. Donna Seymour serves as Chief Information Officer at the U.S. Office of Personnel Management. Ms. Seymour, welcome. Valerie Melvin serves as the Director of Information Management and Technology Resources, Resources at, uh, Issues at the GAO. And uh, Richard Thyssen uh, serves as uh, President of the National Active and Retired Federal Employees Association. Pursuant to committee rules, all witnesses will be sworn in before they testify. Would you all please rise and raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give this committee will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Let the record reflect that all witnesses have answered in the affirmative. Uh, please have a seat. We do have votes scheduled to come up. I would like to get as, uh, as through as much of this as we can. We may get it finished before votes if the House runs typically behind schedule as it, uh, as it normally does. If not, we may have to uh, uh, leave for votes and then uh, uh, come back. But uh, in order to uh, facilitate that, let us make sure we have got some time for discussion. We will follow the five-minute rule, let you all uh, give your five-minute uh, uh, summary of your written testimony, and then uh, we will uh, then proceed to questions. So uh, we will we'll get started with uh, Mr. Zawadny. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Farnhold, Ranking Member Lynch, and members of the subcommittee. Today I would like to just Can you come a little closer to the microphone? You have kind of got to get up really close to be heard. Today I would like to discuss the progress of OPM in reducing the inventory of the Federal Retirement Claim, as well as further automating the claims process. OPM is responsible for processing over 120,000 retirement applications a year from all three branches of the government and dozens of independent agencies. Aside from processing new incoming retirements, OPM also handles post-retirement human resource functions for 2.5 million Federal annuitants, survivors, and their family members. In January 2012, OPM released and began implementation of the Retirement Strategic Plan to reduce the inventory of retirement claims. And we remain on track and focused on the goal of adjudicating 90 percent of those claims within 60 days. Today, the retirement claims inventory is down to about 9,500 cases from, January, uh, from February of 2014. We are now processing 83.4 percent of those claims in under 60 days. Director Archuleta is committed to improving retirement services at OPM. There are three areas targeted for reform, 
process, customer service, and IT solutions. The process team is focused on identifying opportunities to gain efficiency in the processes pertaining to the post-adjudicative workload. Process improvements will lead to a more timely actions and a reduction in the potential for improper payments. We have mapped out and evaluated current processes and we review the data collected in order to identify improvement opportunities. Additionally, the customer service team is studying current processes and customer behavior. The team has made multiple visits to different RS facilities and conducted numerous interviews with current and future retirees. Based on the research, we are focusing our attention on OPM's online services. Interview results show that customers who utilize retirement services, online services, are very satisfied with those particular services and activities. The key is to drive more people to the online services and to further improve those services and experiences for the customers. We also continue to review and improve our call center support. In recent statistics show that the average speed to answer calls for the last quarter of FY 2014 was improved by 30 percent. Our call handling volume has increased to 41 percent, and we have been able to reduce the amount of busy signals by 91 percent. We have also reached out to customer service agencies like the Social Security and the Department of Defense who have similar new and populations to exchange information and ideas on how to better serve all of our customers. Fulfilling a promise she made during her confirmation hearing, Director Archuleta produced a strategic IT plan for OPM within 100 days of becoming the director. In accordance with this plan, our goal is to deliver iterative capability that will yield near-term results and can be built upon over time as we continue to work towards a full automation solution. We are currently focused on processing case management system to track business, procuring a case management system to track business workflows, which increase transparency and efficiencies. This will create the foundation for a fully automated system of the future. In fiscal year 2015, we plan to release a solicitation for award of the case management system and begin configuration of that tool. Our effort will include an online retirement application that will help agencies ensure they submitted completed retirement applications thoroughly and make information more accessible to personnel planning for their retirement. Currently, we will complete a pilot project with payroll service providers for accepting payroll data from shared service centers using a standardized data format. Throughout 2015 and 2016, we will automate further functions currently performed by the mainframe, such as annuity calculations and routines to send payment information to the Treasury. Transitioning from the mainframe to a distributed computing environment will save money and increase our ability to make changes to the system in a timely and efficient manner. OPM has made significant progress in reducing retirement claims inventory and modernizing our retirement process. We expect to continue this process. However, we understand the challenges do remain. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today, and I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Ms. Seymour, was your statement included with uh, uh, Mr. Zawadny, or do you have some additional, anything additional to add? Thank you. Uh, Ms. Melvin, you are up. Good afternoon, Chairman Farrantol, Ranking Member Lynch, and members of the subcommittee. Thank you for inviting me to testify on OPM's system for processing Federal employee retirement benefits. As we all know, OPM has a critical mission to serve current and retired Federal employees, and information technology is integral to this responsibility. As agreed with your staff, my testimony today summarizes findings that we have previously reported on OPM's efforts and challenges to modernize systems supporting the retirement process, and also briefly speaks to its current plans for acquiring new technology. In addition, Based on other work that we have undertaken, I will briefly highlight key IT acquisition success strategies factors that, based on selected agencies' experiences, have proven helpful in carrying out IT acquisitions. In three reports that we previously issued, we noted that OPM's attempts to modernize its systems were hindered in large measure by ineffective IT planning, management, and execution weak project management to include ineffective system testing, the absence of a process to identify and mitigate project risks, and the lack of a fully functioning oversight body to monitor the modernization projects, 
were among a number of factors that contributed to various stops and starts since 1987 and then to the, ter the agency's termination of the Retirement Modernization Program in February 2011. In January 2012, the agency released a plan describing targeted incremental steps that would include making IT improvements to automate retirement application processing. It stated a goal, as you have already mentioned, of processing 90 percent of new claims within 60 days by July 2013, but later extended the date to July 2014. More recently, OPM has indicated that it is focused on acquiring a case management system and ultimately transitioning to a paperless system that will authorize accurate retirement benefits on the day they are due. It also plans other initiatives to incrementally improve retirement processing. We have not yet had an opportunity to closely examine these planned initiatives. Nonetheless, while it is making these plans and has reported progress toward its processing goal, OPM's modernization success will depend on it having a disciplined and effective approach to managing IT investments, one that, among other things, enables the agency to clearly describe how it intends to carry out it, its modernization projects, to include the projected timeframes and financial and other resources needed to accomplish the modernization, and definite measures of its progress toward doing so. In other work, we have reported on common factors critical to successful IT investment acquisitions that were undertaken by selected agencies. The agencies identified nine factors helpful to their achieving cost, schedule, scope, and performance goals. These included active engagement of program stakeholders throughout the acquisition process and having program staff with the necessary knowledge and skills regarding acquisition and procurement processes, contract monitoring, and other areas of program management. As OPM moves forward with its case management and other planned initiatives, applying these critical IT acquisition success factors in conjunction with the industry and government best practices that we have stressed presents opportunities for the agency to engage in more effective management of its investments. And in doing so, the agency may better position itself to avoid mistakes of the past and overcome a long history of unsuccessful attempts to modernize the retirement system. This concludes my oral statement, and I would be pleased to respond to your questions. Thank you very much. Mr. Thyssen? And you are going to need to move that microphone right out in front of your mouth okay. as well. Good good. Is this good? Perfect. Good, good afternoon, uh, and thank you for inviting me to testify. Over the last several years, Congress recognized there were, there were issues with the processing of Federal retirement claims and held hearings drawing attention to the problem. As President of the Association representing those directly affected, I thank the Committee for continuing to address this issue. OPM developed a strategic plan to improve retirement claims processing, implemented the plan as intended, and it has worked. The inventory of pending retirement claims is now roughly 14,000, which is in line with projections. OPM set a goal of processing 90 percent of the claims within 60 days. At 83 percent in November, OPM is not meeting that goal, but is coming close. However, 200 claims are over 180 days old. While this number is decreasing, over six months is too long. In advance of this hearing, we asked NARF members for feedback on their experience with the retirement claims procedure, specifically from those who retired within the last two years. Contrary to the avalanche of complaints we heard three years ago, the responses from hundreds of NARF members were overwhelmingly positive. Nearly 75 percent of the responses we received were favorable and praised the customer service they received from OPM. In most cases, they received their full annuity check, their, they reported their full annuity check came three to four months following their separation from service. A large number of those who reported quick processing noted they received timely information and assistance from their agencies. Proper due diligence on the part of the employee prior to retiring, such as attendance pre-retirement seminars, also contributed. Unfortunately, the responses we received from members who were not satisfied indicated their claims had been in the process anywhere from six months to more than two years. These individuals, not surprisingly, are very unhappy and tell lengthy stories critical of OPM. 
While OPM reports that the average call wait time is 10 minutes, NARF members still report higher wait times and an inability to get through altogether. Overall, things have greatly improved, but there is still room for further improvement. While OPM bears the responsibility for processing the claims, a Federal employee's transition into retirement starts with the employing agency. Unfortunately, the government-wide error rates for retirement submissions remain unacceptable. Although publishing the results has led to pressure on agencies to improve, there was no significant improvement from 2012 to 2014. Agencies should be performing better. Reducing the error rate would improve processing at OPM, especially as it bears the brunt of retirees' frustration with delayed claims. OPM must work to enter the electronic age and eventually end the process of paper records being physically driven up and down the East Coast. We, re we realize this is no easy feat. The proce process of transitioning into retirement varies too widely among employees employing agencies. A standardized process and use of electronic records would go far in ensuring the backlog will be become a distant, distant memory. OPM's IT strategic plan aims to do just that. With incremental process on these initiatives is being made, the timeline for completion and how OPM plans to be held accountable for keeping on schedule is unclear. It is also unclear how funding for these new initiatives will be obtained, particularly during these days of sequestration. In fiscal year 2014, OPM received $2.6 million intended to be directed toward modernizing the retirement processing system. This money came directly from the Civil Servant Retirement and Disability Trust Fund, money that Federal employees have contributed their entire careers in return for retirement stability. These funds should not be used lightly or taken for granted. It is unclear how this money was spent, and as such, OPM should provide additional details regarding this plan. In the future, and consistent with past practice, we urge that financing for IT modernization come from the general fund and not the trust fund. We strongly support efforts by OPM to modernize its retirement services to improve efficiency and better serve the Federal retirees. However, we remain skeptical of drawing additional resources from the trust fund simply because Congress is unwilling to provide adequate financing. Thank you again for providing me the opportunity to share NARS views. I am answered to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. And we will uh, get underway with questions. I appreciate everybody staying within their time limit. Uh, Mr. Zawadny, in our last hearing, uh, you said that by July of 2013, OPM would have been able to process 90 percent of its cases within 60 days. Uh, you are moving in the right direction, but we are still uh, short of the goal, with 83.4 percent of new retirement claims uh, now processed in 60 days. Why haven't we gotten to where we need to be? Well, th thank you, Mr. Farnhold. The, the, the uh, truth of the matter is we have made great progress in reducing that inventory down to a manageable level. And while that near 84 percent of the cases are being done in under 60 days, and that average time of being completed is roughly 36 days, there are still some older cases that we are trying to work through. Uh, the one thing that we did not quite understand when we had those 60,000 cases that uh, Mr. Lynch mentioned uh, was the complexity of some of those cases that would be processed. As we have gotten our inventory down to a manageable, steady state, we now understand more the complexity of the cases and what is needed. Uh, with regard to missing information such as service credit or pay information that is needed to finalize the case. And a as we have worked better to understand that, we are able to uh, uh, drive up the amount of cases that we process in under 60 days, and we will continue to do so. Well, now we have got an issue, though, with the number of workers eligible to retire uh, suggests a potential for an upswing in pending claims in the coming years. How are you all preparing for this challenge? Uh, just as we have prepared for all the other challenges regarding process and retirement, we continue to uh, uh, replace individuals who have retired or left the agency. We have cross-trained individuals to ensure that they understand different disciplines of the work to be conducted so that when we have a surge in one area, we can move additional resources in there to try to drive uh, that workload down. Uh, the other thing that we do is work closely with the agencies to try to improve their, their processing. 
uh, of the cases on their end to educate employees better on their retirement applications so that when they come to us, they can be fully uh, worked uh, as quickly as possible. All right. Then also, while uh, there has been some progress, and I applaud that, some Federal workers uh, continue to wait six months or longer for their pensions. OPM's backlog of uh, pending disability, retirement, and lump sum death benefit uh, determinations is also of concern. It is my understanding you all have 29 staff assigned to uh, lump sum benefits uh, claims and 66 assigned to disability. Uh, is this enough? The lump sum payments um, are averaging about 140 days, but we need to understand exactly what that lump sum payment uh, represents. It represents the amount of days that the annuitant survived in a particular month. For instance, if the annuitant passed away on the fifth of the month, they are entitled to five days of pay for that month. Right. The lump sum represents that five days of pay. When we get notified of the death uh, of an annuitant, we immediately process uh, the application for the death insurance payment, as well as getting the survivors into survivor pay so that they can continue their monthly payment as allotted by the survivor benefit. Uh, the final thing we do is solidify and, and finalize the uh, lump sum payment, which sometimes can be uh, very little or uh, up to a month's worth of pay. We continue to uh, uh, work in that area, and that goes back to some of the cross-training that we have done. Uh, to move resources where, where into those areas that need to be uh, uh, to put higher attention to. Great. Um, let me go to Ms. Seymour. You are kind of the, uh, the tech expert here, I guess. Um, you, you we're moving toward a paperless system, and you know, there is a distinction between less paper and no paper at all being uh, paperless. Is, is a true paperless system doable where you get all, you're almost entirely electronic, and would it help? Uh, Any time that we can eliminate uh, paper, it helps uh, move the process faster and uh, makes the process more accurate. Um, we're working with the Retirement Services Business Unit to understand where we can eliminate uh, paper and in compliance with the rules and regulations that they use for processing retirements. There are some opportunities and there will be some challenges as we move through that process. So we want to make sure that we have targeted uh, the opportunities first that we can eliminate paper uh, soonest in that process. And I would assume you are taking an approach to this. Obviously, you are going to have the exceptional cases where somebody has bounced around to a dozen Federal agencies over your, their career. But a, a veteran who goes to work for the Postal Service when they uh, come out of, uh, out of the service and serve there until they retire is not uncommon. Are we, are we focusing on the easy ones first or are we getting bogged down trying to create a system that will handle all cases uh, rather than uh, you know, starting with the easy ones and growing it? Uh, thank you, sir. I am going to let Mr. Zawadny talk to his business priorities. Okay. Uh, in the particular case of that, that postal employee you mentioned, uh, the Postal Service and other agencies that use part-time or seasonal help add a complication when it comes to the, 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 the figuring of the retirement claim. But let's say that same employee you mentioned did do service, uh, serve the country, and then came to work as a civil servant, uh, stayed with that same agency for their entire year or for their entire career. Uh, that particular case uh, could be considered a simple case. The problem becomes quite often that earlier in their career is if when service credit or service time uh, was unaccounted for or mismanaged or not properly uh, documented, that is where that missing service comes in. So quite often those older cases that you mentioned earlier that may take six months or nine months, those people waiting, it's, it's near every time we are waiting you ought to be able to get the so you, you ought to be able to come up with a business process where you have got to have the simple ones and the hard ones. Is it not doable to it is. automate That's the simple ones first and then you know, start growing it as you learn more? I talked to the programmers of the Google self-driving car. They have identified tens of thousands of unique driving situations. They start with the obvious ones, and then when they encounter a new one, they grow the system. Is that uh, the approach 
approach? That is absolutely the approach, and that is the approach that we have taken to drive the inventory down to where it is today. We have been able to segment out those, those uh, less complicated cases and put teams of forces on those. And as we move into the automation uh, of that particular uh, process, we will be able to automate those cases and those exceptions where we are missing information or data mm -hmm. to finalize the case will have to be. Uh, right, well, I have gone way over. We will let Mr. Lynch get his questions in, and I have got a couple more. We will do a second round after uh, my colleague finishes here. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Let, let's just follow up uh, on the chairman's thinking there a little bit. Is, is there a is there a uniformity to these cases that are more pernicious and more difficult to resolve? Are we talking about, as as the chairman suggested, someone who's got multiple uh, jurisdictions of service? Yes, sir. There are some cases where an individual may have worked at one agency their entire career, and then those individuals that have gone from agency to agency to agency. Yeah. So, of, so uh, I, I, I do want to try to get through a number of questions, but uh, what, what happens to a person? I mean, are these the cases that are going on for six months? I can't. Now, what happens? I mean, listen, what happens to an employee that has to wait six months? Are they in limbo? Are they hanging? Uh, do they have no income if they file for their retirement and they are waiting six months? Uh, your, your mic is not on. Is it on now? Okay. Yeah. They get a temporary payment, but obviously that is not the optimum, and, and it does create hardship for some of the members. Yeah. It sure does. Okay. Uh, Ms. Melvin, you did mention that uh, we have in the current system, uh, OPM uses, uh, I believe you said, 500 different procedures, uh, laws and regulations, and 80 information systems that have, I believe you said, 400 different interfaces to process retirement applications. Approximately. Isn't, yeah. isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't that the root of the problem here? Is that what we are talking about? Well, I, say, I think it certainly points to a complex process and a complex system that they have to uh, try to um, address. And it is part of the problem. Um, from our standpoint, it, it doesn't make it impossible to address it, though. Uh, what we are looking for from the standpoint of what OPM does is to have clearly defined plans and a very detailed tactical approach to addressing these kinds of complexities. Uh, we mentioned priorities. There are priorities in terms of the requirements that have to be defined and how they are going to work through uh, developing or acquiring the particular systems uh, and how those systems would interface. So a number of factors that go into addressing it. Complex, yes, but not impossible. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. It just seems to me that it doesn't need to be this, this difficult. And, uh, there, there might actually be some savings here if we move away from the the paper uh, system to to one that is you know automated. Uh, I'm a little surprised it's 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 taken this long. You mentioned also in your remarks there was a lack of oversight in terms of making this transition. Who do you think should be should we bring somebody in from the outside in terms to in, in terms of making sure that this this transition happens or uh, how would the oversight uh, take place. Obviously, it is more difficult without having somebody, somebody o overseeing this. When, when we did our work uh, and, and reported on the oversight issue, uh, one of the things that we looked at were their investment review boards, and that would be the critical players in terms of a chief information officer, uh, chief financial officer, or whomever else would be involved, uh, the, the, the key officials uh, from the business side who make the decisions on what the investments are going to be, how they prioritize those. Um, that, we, we continue to believe that that is necessary in terms of having those key players. Um, Ms. Seymour is the chief information officer at OPM, and we would look to her as a first source of oversight uh, relative to what has to be done in terms of delivering the technology solutions. Uh, that being said, Mr. Zawadny and his role you know, from the business side is also critical. So there are the oversight, the proper positions are there in terms of oversight. It is a matter of making sure that, uh, that when those boards are, are getting together that they, in fact, are performing. Uh, when we looked at what was being done uh, back some years ago, the board was in place. There was an oversight board. However, it had not been 
responding to the types of issues, that the problems and concerns that were being brought to it. Uh, so it has to be a functional board. It, uh, it has to be a functional oversight capability, and that is what we would look for uh, going forward. Yeah, thank you. I am just concerned, as, as the Chairman has noted, the, the concern up here is whether we have got all the low-hanging fruit, and so we have we've eliminated, I mean, you, you deserve to be commended. You have eliminated 75 percent of your black backlog. The problem here is, though, uh, you have got this significant lingering uh, backlog, and if people keep retiring at the rate that they have been, we have got a, you know, we've got a possible resurgence in the, in the size of the backlog, and uh, we are back to square one at some point. So uh, now is the time to try to, uh, you know, to try to change over the system. I know you all have uh, tremendous re responsibility already. You have made commendable progress. Uh, I am not, I'm not criticizing. I am just trying to see what, what framework gets us to where we need to be. Um, it, it, we need to have sustainable progress here. We can't, have, we can't retrench every so often. Uh, we need to fix the system. And uh, let me ask, uh, how much of this is money in terms of funding and, and uh, you know, we don't like the idea of just throwing money at a problem and expecting it to go away. That, that has proven to be a failure in the past. You've really got to spend your money wisely and make those, make those important changes. But, uh, Mr. Zawadney, talk to me about the resources that you might need. Uh, well, Mr. Lynch, um, as stated earlier, we did receive $2.6 million in 2014, and in the President's budget for 2015, we requested an additional $2.4 million. Is that, uh, Mr. Thyssen was complaining about you raiding the uh, Disability Trust Fund. Is that where you got some of this money? That, that's correct, sir. Um, the we law can't keep doing that, can we? I'm sorry? We can't keep doing that, right? Well, the law authorizes us to use the trust fund for operating expenses for retirement services. It's not yeah. an appropriations. All right. I'm just nervous about having a, a resulting unfunded liability, you know, in that in that fund or inadequate resources, sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul. I'd rather not get into that situation. But uh, but but go ahead. I interrupted you. Uh, and with the current funding that we have, we believe that that's going to be a sustainable amount to get us started on on the right path. Um, we have a number of initiatives, like I mentioned. We're going to be releasing an RFP very shortly. Um, to solicit vendors to provide us an estimate on what it's going to cost to have a case management system started for us with a platform and actual case management system. Only then will we really understand exactly what the true cost is going to be and then be able to come back and, and properly budget for that in, in out years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. You hit a couple of the questions I got. I have basically just got a couple more questions. Ms. Melvin, after its last major initiative resulted in termination of a $290 million contract, OPM switched to an incremental approach for its modernization. Uh, have we addressed the management issues, do you think, uh, as you've, that you have identified in your previous reports and your testimony today? Are we at a, a point uh, you think they can do it? And uh, do you have any feeling as to, uh, as to and I guess probably more of a question uh, for Mr. Zawadney after, after you answer, but is there the commitment to do it? We hope there is, but we have not been in to look at their initiatives and what they are undertaking at this point. Um, we, we would uh, certainly uh, look to Ms. Seymour and, and Mr. Zawadney to be primary players in making sure that they can move forward, and is I hope that they are. But we would need to do more work to really be able to provide an informed response to that. All right. And then, uh, Mr. Sawadney, I, go, I, I, I used to be a computer consultant my early days, and I actually got into it when I led an automation process for a law firm that uh, I was getting, that I was working at. That is what got me interested in technology. And what I discovered was that among a lot of the people who use the, the technology, uh, be they lawyers or secretaries or whatever, are so busy in their day-to-day -day operations they don't want to take the time to learn a new system or participate in a committee or a, dis a study to figure out how to automate uh, and make their job uh, easier. Uh, and, you know, in, in today's time, most people recognize that a little bit of time invested in technology typically p pays off very well. Is there the attitude within your workforce 
uh, and does it go all the way up to the top where we're, there's a willingness to commit the time and the effort that may in the short term put you a little bit behind, you have to work a little bit harder to go to that technology committee meeting, uh, but in the long run will make your life a whole lot easier? Uh, the short answer to that is yes, overwhelming um, enthusiasm to, to, to become more modern uh, within the entire organization from the top all the way down and back up. We have a number of, of processes already in place within retirement services that are an automated process, from the receipt of the initial notification for the individual to retire, going through the interim pay that we mentioned earlier, through the calculations piece, and, and even to a rudimentary type of case management system we have. Our folks are attuned to using automation right now and welcome the opportunity to use the automation okay. uh, and to expand upon it even further into the future. And just one last question to Ms. Seymour. Uh, uh, Mr. Lynch uh, talked about 80-plus legacy systems. I mean, I'm assuming those are, you know, you've got some old systems that are probably in Fortran and COBOL and other extinct programming language on hardware you probably can't get parts for. You know, would that be a fair characterization of some of the stuff? It is fair, yes, sir. Uh, that has got to be awfully expensive. We ought to be, would we not be able to save some money if we move to a, a modern system that is more, if you will, off the shelf or uh, you know, certainly doesn't have to have uh, custom manufactured parts with vacuum tubes? We're not, uh, thank you, sir. We're not quite that antiquated, but what we are doing is moving from a mainframe environment. Most of these applications, and when when we talk about eighty applications, they're small applications that do a very finite set of functions and together form the retirement services system. So what we're doing is taking this very incremental approach. Uh, putting in place the case management system first, and then we are looking at each of those applications to make sure we understand the complete functionality that they perform and how we can move them into the modern environment. That gives us the opportunity for uh, Mr. Zawadny's staff to experience a little bit of the capabilities, right. learn a little bit, and then we give them, you know, we build on that capability over time. I am reminded of a, a I took a computer in when I was doing a law firm to one of the senior partners. Yeah, he called me up and said, come get this rat thing out of my uh, office, referring to the mouse. I hope we don't, uh, I hope we don't have that. I, I don't have anything else. Mr. Lynch, did you have anything you wanted to follow up on? Well, just, uh, I, I would just want to uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would just want to encourage you to, to try to tighten up what you need. Uh, you know, on this side of the dais, that is what we want to know, uh, resources, uh, Technical assistance, maybe a, you know, a, a third party to 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 oversee the transition. I know you you're both working very hard. All of you are working very hard, but uh, sometimes you need a sort of an honest broker here to to uh, w when you've got when you've got uh, 500 different procedures and all these laws and regulations. You've got 80 information systems and 400 different interfaces. Sometimes that can be overwhelming, and and you've got obvious turf concerns between departments. If we can have somebody else sort of be the umbrella group that gets all of these people corralled, you know, we can make a little bit more progress than we have been. We're going too slow right now, and uh, that that raises some concerns for me. So we want to be we want to be helpful, and uh, you know, we just need more input in order to make sure what we're doing is is uh, is rowing in the same direction that that you all are. Thank you. I yield back. Great. We made it in time for us to get out to votes. We are not going to hold you over. Uh, I join with Mr. Lynch in encouraging you to get this job uh, done, get the process finished and fixed. Our uh, Federal workers deserve uh, prompt and adequate processing of their, of their retirement after years of service to, uh, to this country. Thank you very much. We are adjourned.